in Florida field for this battle between the Seminoles of Florida State, whom you see coming onto the field right there under head coach Bobby Bowden and trying to wrap up an unbeaten regular season as they head on toward the Orange Bowl, where they will be facing the Big A champion, either Nebraska or Oklahoma, depending on what happens tomorrow in the Midlands. And their opponents today wearing orange jerseys for the first time ever. The University of Florida Gators, you see the record on the year, an unfortunate one. No wins, eight losses, one tie under their new head coach, Charlie Pell. And the Gators, hoping to salvage a measure of satisfaction from what has so far been a very disappointing season. Believe me, for these people, a victory over Florida State would be big satisfaction indeed. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. It has been more than a year since Florida State University lost a football game. It has been more than a year since the University of Florida won one. During that time, a lot of things have happened. Charlie Pell has arrived at Florida to take over and begin rebuilding the Gator football program. And Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles have continued what is now one of the most unusual and interesting success stories in all of college football. A success story we wanted to show to all of you across the entire nation. Here with me today to watch the Seminoles and the Gators, a former quarterback who can still throw it pretty well in our touch football game, Lee Gross Cup. And Cupper, this should be your kind of ball game. I think we will definitely see the ball in the air a lot. You know, we could see a record number of passes. Florida started throwing the ball recently with Larry Ochab. Today, their backup quarterback, John L. Brown, will be playing at the tailback position, so we could see him throwing the run pass. Now, you know about Florida State already. They have a tandem of quarterbacks who have really become a household word in college football, and I'm speaking, of course, about Wally Woodham and Jimmy Jordan. Now, between those two guys, they have combined for over 7,000 yards of career total offense. Now finishing their third year of sharing the Florida State quarterback job, Wally Woodham and Jimmy Jordan, a fascinating story. They went to the same high school, Leon High School in Tallahassee, Florida. They are fraternity brothers. They have been roommates on the road. They are alike in so many ways. And yesterday, I talked to them about the unique situation in which they share the quarterbacking duties at Florida State. Wally, you and Jimmy have had a fascinating experience these past several years. Have you ever thought back that perhaps you would have been happier being at another school where you could have had the quarterbacking job all to yourself rather than to have shared it with him? Well, not really. Uh, it's been a good situation at Florida State. Over the last three years, we won we've only lost five ball games, and um, I've really enjoyed it at Florida State. And, of course, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, and uh, I'm kind of glad to be staying at home. Is there a positive aspect to the sharing of the quarterback job in the sense that you don't feel the pressure to have to do everything on your own? You know that he's there if something isn't going right for you? Yeah, it's, there's that security there for that. And also, it's just that it's worked out for our team. You know, when one guy's not doing it, the other guy's come in and done the job. And uh, it's worked out the last three years, and we're just glad it has. This week, you're starting. What does that mean to you? Well, it means, um, th th you know, that we've been starting on and off all along. And uh, I'm just, my job is to go out and get it started and get it going. And um, Jimmy could come on, or I don't know, I might go all the way. It's just what Coach Bowden feels. Jimmy, this weekend you're in the situation in which you've been so frequently. Wally will start the ball game. What are you thinking about? Do you sit on the bench and watch and wait for when your opportunity is going to come? Yeah, so, you know, I'll be, you know, try to be ready when, if I get called upon, well, you know, I got to start the LSU game. It was televised, and Coach Bowden told us he thought it would be fair if Wally started this one since it would be on TV. I think that's good, you know, we're winning, and that's what everybody really wants, and, you know, I just hope Wally all the luck. Has the competition between the two of you affected your friendship at any time in any way? We've never had any problems with it whatsoever. You know, we just try to make it a team effort, you know, and if he can do well, let him do it. If I can, let me do it. You know, it's just, like I said, the main thing we want to do is win, and we've never had any fusses or fights about, about this, you know. It, it could be, you know, if one of us were really sour about the situation, but we're not. A decision typical of the way Bobby Bowden has handled the two quarterbacks all along. Wally Woodham will start today because Jimmy Jordan started the LSU game earlier in the season, which was telecast to most of the country. The two teams have played 21 times. Florida has won 16 of them. Since in the 1950s, the Florida State Legislature decreed that they must begin playing each other. However, Florida State has won the last two, and they are the dog which is on top now. Florida will try to reverse things when we come back. 
You heard Lee Grosscup say that freshman reserve quarterback John L. Brown would be playing at tailback today for Florida. He has also been selected to return the opening kickoff for the Gators. And back to kick it for Florida State is number 17, Bill Capis, a junior from Miami who handles only the kickoff chores for the Seminoles. The field goal kicker is another man. So here's Capis to start it off. All the way to the back of the end zone, and Janelle Brown will down it there. Here are the young men who will be on the offensive line for the Gators. Chris Faulkner, a walk-on freshman tight end, an outstanding athlete. Bill Bennick at left tackle, and two freshmen will start next to Bennick. Dan Plunk from Merritt Island, Florida, a freshman at left guard. Next to him, also from Merritt Island, freshman John Redmond at center, who has a bad thumb. Wally Huff is the right guard, an experienced player. Joe Wickline, perhaps the strongest blocker at the line of scrimmage, is at right tackle. On first down, the Gators are in a spread formation with four wide receivers. Setback Terry Williams goes in motion, and he catches the pass from Larry Ochab. And you can see how quickly the Florida State defense reacts as Williams is dumped behind the line of scrimmage. Larry Ochab is the starting quarterback for Florida. He is a walk-on junior. Janelle Brown, freshman from Gainesville, starting today at tailback. Terry Williams is the fullback, a workmanlike fullback. Kurt Garrett, a good split end. And the best athlete on the offense is this man, flanker Chris Collinsworth, a high school All-America quarterback from Titusville, Florida. On second down. 13 yards to go. The Gators try the middle of the line, and Seminole Arthur Scott was there to stop Terry Williams after a pickup of two yards. Now it will be third down 10. You look at the defensive line for Florida State, the man to watch there, number 50, Ron Simmons, the nose guard, one of the very best defensive linemen in the United States. And this is an outstanding secondary for Florida State. Watch Butler 21 and Bonasort 42, the free safety, who has eight interceptions this year. On third down, three wide receivers. Collinsworth comes in motion back toward quarterback Oshab. And the pass is complete. Kurt Garrett the split in at the football out near the 40-yard line, but dropped it. And the officials are going to rule a completion and that Garrett lost the ball out of bounds. I think they're going to say that it's a good call. I believe that Garrett has possession here as he's running an out pattern. Double coverage over on the other side on Collinsworth. And here is Garrett, who we saw two weeks ago catching a lot of passes. He does have possession, loses possession, and then it goes out of bounds. First down for Florida, and you see Ron Simmons, the sensational Florida State nose guard, smothering the Florida running back Carl Prelo before the play could begin. Ron Simmons, perhaps the finest nose guard in America right now, and he's only a junior. He has four or five speed in the 40-yard dash, awesome upper body strength. He bench presses 535 pounds. He probably will be the front runner along with Hugh Green next year for the Outland Trophy. Lee, you hear so much about the quarterbacks, but that man may be the most important part of the Florida State success story. Second down, 18. Incomplete. Bobby Butler, the cornerback, was right there with Kurt Garrett. And Bobby Butler is a heck of a cornerback. Number 21, 5'11", 164 pounds from Delray Beach. We may see him matched a lot man-on-man -man today against Chris Collinsworth. 21 against 21. He would be giving away five inches in height. However, they're both about the same speed. Exceptional speed, 4'4 four -four in the 40-yard dash. Bobby Butler, perhaps the best athlete in the secondary. And as you pointed out, J.L., a good one. You see Bobby Bowden on the sidelines. Ball is short of the 32. They must get to the 49 for a first down. Pass is dropped. Ochao was throwing over the middle, trying to hit running back Carl Prelo, number 53. Right there with him was Paul Pirowski, a linebacker, and the Florida State defense after giving up the one first down on the completion Ochad to Garrett Poles. Conover back to punt for Florida and deep to receive for Florida State. It is Michael, or check it, Gary Henry. Henry will watch the ball, takes a gator roll, and is downed at the 20-yard line. Forty-eight yard punt, and we look at the men who will line up along the offensive line for Florida State. Tight end Grady King will also see Sam Childers. Lanier, the best blocker at the line of scrimmage. Good as an outstanding guard. They're very strong on the left side. John Madden replaced Gil Wesley at center when Wesley was injured. The only injury the Seminoles have suffered of any consequence this year. Butch at right guard, Brandon at right tackle. We repeat the starting quarterback today, Wally Woodham. 
expect to see Jimmy Jordan later on. First down from the 20. Makes a whiting. And tight end Brady King steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line as Woodham's first pass is complete. Doc Lucky ran him out of bounds. You look at Woodham and Jordan, who share the quarterbacking duties. Michael Whiting, a converted fullback, is the starter at tailback. Mark Lyles, the heart of the FSU running game from his fullback position. A freshman split end, Hardis Johnson, will also see Sam Platt at that position. And there's the primary receiver, the main receiving threat for the Seminoles, Jackie Flowers. Second down, four yards to go. This is Lyles. Number 57, Tim Golden. Defensive end for Florida. Stop Lyles near the line of scrimmage, and they'll have a third down play coming up. You see the defensive line for Florida. Most consistent player there is Robin Fisher, but Lucky is the outstanding athlete. And Yancey Sutton is a great story at defensive end. Linebacking situation for Florida has been unsettled because of injuries. They're missing David Little today. And Sonny Gilliam is a freshman starting at cornerback number 43. He's got a tough assignment. On third down and three. Woodham is up. Doc Lucky. Number 72, Doc Lucky, a junior defensive tackle from Fort Pierce. The strongest man on the field. Ten-yard loss. Let's take a look at Doc Lucky, number 72. As Jim Lampley just pointed out, the strongest man on the team who was demoted to a second-string player because of attitude problems earlier this year has regained the starting role. And there you see some of that awesome strength and quickness. Fourth down as Florida State fails to convert on their first third down opportunity. Ron Stark, number three, goes back to punt inside his five-yard line. Collinsworth, number 21, is deep for Florida. Stark, the left-footed punter, gets it away. Collinsworth waves to the fair catch and lets it roll, and it takes a Florida State roll inside the 25 to the 23-yard line before Gary Futch downs it for the Seminole. So we're early in the first quarter. No score. The Gators will have the football when we come back. The 60-yard punt by Ron Stark of Florida State, his longest of the year. And now Florida will start the offense from the 23-yard line. You look at Larry Oshab, the walk-on junior from Orlando who took over the quarterbacking duties three weeks ago against Auburn. Gators have had trouble on offense this year. But he has made a difference, as you pointed out. Against Auburn, he threw for 269 yards, and he has given them something going through the air. That is something they did not have prior to that. As we look over at Wally Woodham, who was sacked, and that was only the ninth sack of the year. Florida State offensive line has generally done a great job of protecting Woodham and Jordan. On first down, this is Collinsworth. Ochad's completion to Collinsworth moves the football only to the 25. The pickup of two it will be second down eight. They've gotten the football to him, though, and they had trouble doing that two weeks ago against Georgia when we covered them. Two weeks ago, he got almost exclusively double coverage, sometimes triple coverage. Today, we may see him going man up with Bobby Butler, who also wears number 21. There are the figures on the year for Collinsworth. The give is the free low. And out there at the corner... Number 39, Reggie Herring, junior linebacker from Titusville, met him, dropped him for a loss of two. It will be third down 10 for the Gators. Third, an obvious pass situation. Let's see if they do go once again to their best athlete on the field, who is Chris Collinsworth. Collinsworth, who has 4 4 speed in the 40 yard dash, and a guy who can really hurt you a lot of different ways. Garrett is to the bottom of the screen, Collinsworth is to the top he comes in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. Ochap throws behind Garrett. He was under pressure, and no one was open. Garrett running a sideline route that time. Collinsworth was the man clearing out. The protection was there, but he threw it away. Ivory Joe Hunter with the good coverage on Garrett. Now Gary Henry is deep to receive for Florida State as again. Bill Conover gets ready to punt it for Florida. First punt, traveled 46 yards. Gary Henry. And Henry, by waiting for the ball to bounce, gave the Florida coverage a chance to get downfield. Jeremy Mendlin was 
was trying to block in front of him, but they could not open up a hole, and Florida State will start from the 38-yard line when we come back. Charlie Bell played lineman for Bear Bryant at Alabama, and the bulk of that career coaching record compiled at Jacksonville State and then at Clemson. Doc Lucky jumps offside for Florida, and so the Seminoles of Florida State are the beneficiaries of the first penalty of the ball game. And that will move the football to the 48. Doc Lucky wants another little chunk of the quarterback. <laughs> Salivating after that first sack. That's right. So make it first down five now for FSU. Artis Johnson is to the bottom of the screen. Jackie Flowers to the top. And Woodham wants Michael White. Into Gator territory, past the 40 to the 39-yard line. Chuck Hatch missed the tackle. This is what Wally Woodham does so well, play action pass. He is better at the short stuff in the intermediate game and throwing to his backs here to tailback Michael Whiting, who Jim Lampley has really made a difference in their running game, and he's also effective as a receiver. He took over right after a game that I covered earlier this year against Virginia Tech. When, by that time, they had lost two of their tailbacks. You might want to amplify. You look at Bobby Bowden along the sidelines. They have had trouble at the tailback position, losing Greg Ramsey and Holmes Johnson. This is Lyon. And the big fullback is inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Doc Lucky dragged him down from behind. 14-yard pickup for Lyon. So another first down for FSU. This part of their running game has not been weak, however. There's not much of a hole here, but he has been known to make his own holes. And that, of course, is big Mark Lyles, who is second in career rushing now for the Seminoles and has been a consistent ground gainer for them all year long. You saw Juan Collins slow him down before Lucky dragged him down. This is first down for Florida State at the 26. That's Whiting, and he's just inside the 25 to the 24. Number 66 is Robin Fisher, the nose guard. This is what it looks like from down in the stands. Last home game of the year for Florida. Stadium here holds 64,000. They hope to have 72,000 seats by September 11, 1982, when they will be playing Southern Cal. Second down, seven for Florida State. play and a flag is down. Wiles was dropped for a yard loss. Yancey Sutton made the play with, along with 49 Fernando Jackson, a freshman linebacker. And the penalty is apparently going to be an offside call against Florida State. But there you saw a little bit of the sophistication of their passing attack. They have so many different ways that they can hurt you. They uh, there is the call right there. They do a lot of screens, a lot of draws. They use the Statue of Liberty play. They really vary their protection a lot. Uh, they use play action passes. And of course, they have an outstanding drop back series. Pass protection has been one of the keys this year. As we pointed out, only eight sacks coming into today's game. And that has given Wally Woodham and Jimmy Jordan the opportunity they have needed to pick defenses apart. Third down nine. Hardis Johnson to the top of the screen. He's a freshman with speed. Jackie Flowers to the bottom, the wide side of the field. Woodham wants weak side to Hardis Johnson. Tim Golden, number 57, batted the ball down for Florida. Tim Golden is a guy that Charlie Pell likes a lot, and he is very high on the potential of this defensive line. It was thought that the front seven of Florida would be as good as any front seven in the SEC, but they have been decimated this year by injuries. They lost starting defensive tackle Steve Tanner. They lost starting defensive tackle David Galloway. They lost Yancey Sutton for several games. Now Dave Capellan is on to attempt a 41-yard field goal for the Seminoles. And this kick is low. Capellan was 13 of 18 in the field goal department before that one, making now 13 of 19, as holder Rick Stocksville was unable to get the ball in position, and Capellan hit it high. Capellan already the career-scoring leader for Florida State. Before this season even started, he has added to that, but that time he disconnected. So Florida will have the football at what was the line of scrimmage, the 25-yard line. And the Seminoles have wasted the first scoring opportunity of the game. 
Three wide receivers. Picked off. Number 51 is James Gilbert, a sophomore defensive tackle from Miami. He was the man who got the football after another Seminole had deflected it into the air. Watch very carefully. You're going to see the ball tipped before Gilbert comes up with the interception. There is the tip right there. And here comes the key interception that Jim Lapley just spoke of. And now excellent field position for the Seminoles. Who got the tip? Number 60, Scott McLean, a sophomore defensive end from Claremont, Florida, was the man who tipped it. A reserve defensive end is on this hot day. Bobby Bowden has already gone to some substitutions on defense. First down, Lyle. Robin Fisher drags Lyles down as he gets inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. There is James Gilbert, one of four defensive tackles whom Bobby Bowden uses interchangeably on defense for Florida State. And the sophomore from Miami had his first interception of the year. That is a rare experience for a defensive tackle to intercept the pass, and it shows on his face. He is the envy of all the other defensive linemen yeah. right now. <laughs> Why couldn't it be me? Second down. Six yards to go. Bill Williams to the bottom of the screen. Whiting in motion. And Woodham is hit as he tried to release the ball. Number 50, Yancey Sutton got there. Yancey Sutton, who also went to Tallahassee Leon High School, same place that Wally Woodham and Jimmy Jordan went to school. He had an enormous urge to play today, and he's coming back off of an injury, having missed five games just to play in this one. Very inspirational story because Yancey is deaf. However, he lip reads very well. In fact, last year he apparently lip read a fake punt in a ball game against Georgia Tech. Wally Woodham, only two out of five so far in the ball game for 23 yards. Third down six. They must get the ball to the eight-yard line for a first down. Woodham doesn't like what he sees on the Florida defense and draws a delay of game penalty. So far, the Florida defensive line has been very active, much more so than I think the Seminoles had expected them to be. Possibly because of the re-emergence of Doc Lucky, the man who they felt would be the best man along that front wall. Certainly, he is the physically strongest. He has a, a, milit a bench press of over 500 pounds, and that does not mean that he bench presses a 500-pound bench. I wanted to clarify that because someone asked me about that recently. They're down 11 now. And again, Woodham is done. That time, he had time, but nobody was open downfield. Tim Golden got there first. Robin Fisher followed him. Well, if we were going to do any of the keys today, I would have said that the key for Florida was to establish a pass rush. They would have to do that to curtail this highly sophisticated passing attack of Florida State. So far, they have done that and done it very well. This is the identical spot from which Davey Capellan missed just a minute and a half ago. Only 10 sacks this season, two of them so far here in the first quarter. Florida State is now 0 for 4 on third down conversions, and in preparation for this field goal, they have called timeout. <laughs> Seminoles brought 10,000 fans over from Tallahassee, and now Dave Capellan will be trying from 41 yards out to give FSU the lead. This one's good. Six minutes, 23 seconds left in the first quarter. And after the interception by defensive tackle James Gilbert, Florida State was unable to move the offense, but they pick up the field goal by Dave Capellan and lead it 3-0. There is a man who is having an incredible year. He recently had his 50th birthday. 30th wedding anniversary. He has a brand new contract that you might want to talk more about. And just three days ago, he received his first grandchild. His oldest son, Steve, and his wife, Janet, presented him with a grandson named Bo. Well, Coach Bowden considered this kind of a turning point year. He has turned 50. Still young enough 
to carve out another opportunity, but reaching the point where he wanted to find a place where he might settle down. He asked Florida State for security when he was getting offers from other schools. He was contacted specifically this year by LSU. Yes. And they gave it to him in the form of a five-year contract, total package over $600,000. There's Janelle Brown, and he waits for the kickoff from Capice. Light wind is behind Bill Capice, and you saw him knock it all the way out of the end zone. Florida will start with the football, trailing 3 nothing. This Monday night on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, AFC game between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Jets. But then Thursday night, on a special Thursday night edition of ABC's NFL Football, you will be seeing the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. Very important game in the AFC East. On first down, Oshab's pass almost intercepted. Bobby Butler was the man who had it in his hands. Bobby Butler and Keith Jones both had a shot at that ball. Well, much was made of the fact that Janelle Brown was starting a tailback for Florida today, but he has not yet touched the ball from that position. <laughs> However, he is the leading ball carrier on the team. He has been a backup quarterback. He was a tailback first, and he can run and he can throw. Ocham, three of eight for 19 yards. <laughs> Going deep to Collinsworth, and Collinsworth may have wrestled the ball away from the defensive back. He did. He did. Outstanding catch. The ball hung, and he had to wait. Number 28, Keith Jones, is coming into your coverage. This ball is well thrown along the sidelines by Ochab. There's Jones. And here is Chris Collinsworth showing some of the form, which I think next year is going to make him an All-American. Here he is isolated. He reminds me a little bit of an old teammate of mine, Del Schaffner. He's 6'4", 192 pounds, and he is fast. On first down from the FSU 49-yard line, that is Terry Williams with the football. Do you think I'm sexy? Well, of course. <laughs> I think it's probably about you, Lee. Do you think I'm sexy? Well, ask uh, Clarion or uh, Marty All or right. Cindy or Elaine or Taro. Well, apparently they do. And, and thank you. Don't thank me. I'm thanking them. Second down and nine. Ochab. That is Collinsworth. And you see the official ruling out of bounds. Number 80 is defensive end Scott Warren, who went all the way downfield 20 yards past the line of scrimmage to cover. That's a tough assignment when a defensive end has to cover Chris Collinsworth all alone. Because of the nature of the coverage, he's open, but it's a good call by the official. Now that's what Florida was able to affect that time by putting two wide receivers to the top of the screen. They got the defensive end covering Collinsworth. That's exactly what they want to do today is mix up their formations a little bit more. We might even see them using the shotgun, which they have not used this year. The penalty now being walked off against Florida. Holding call against the Gators. So it all would have gone for naught even if Collinsworth had stayed in bounds. And that moves the football back to the Florida 38-yard line, where now it is second down, 23 yards to go for a first down. John Whitaker, number 34, in the game at fullback for Florida. Ochad throwing on almost every down. In and out of the hands of John L. Brown. John L. not too happy about that. You mentioned him just a moment ago that we hadn't seen him get his hands on the football. The first time he does get his hands on the ball, attempted pass reception, he drops it. He's frustrated. And there is number one, Don Van Wee, who is the long field goal kicker for Florida and also the kickoff man, and he is practicing into the net. Third down now, 23 yards to go for a Florida first down. The FSU defense is spread out. Four-man rush with a blitz. Ochab but to put the ball down and run. Keith Jones knocks him out of bounds. And that'll make it fourth down. Pressure by Arthur Scott, defensive end number 54. Ron Simmons, number 50, was in there. Reggie Herring came on the blitz. Three guys who have been busy all year. When it's third and 23 and you know what's coming, you have an advantage. Yep. Conover will kick. 
Gary Henry is deep to wait for it for FSU. Henry has a chance to run this back. Only got it past the 30 to the 32 yard line. Jim Calamaris, reserve nose guard number 71, was downfield to make the tackle for Florida after the 41 yard punt by Conover. And FSU will start their fourth possession at the 32 yard line. Henry has been effective this year as a return man. In fact, he rated 10th nationally coming into the day's game. However, so far, he's been shut down. Slight breeze behind Wally Woodham. Artis Johnson to the bottom of the screen. Flowers to the top. Almost picked off. Number 27 is Bill Fiorillo. A junior cornerback, a walk-on from Carl Gables, who almost had it. This is Flowers. Flowers on the sideline cut, and watch Fiorillo get what is so close to a touchdown interception. Here is the sideline cut right now, and the ball, instead of being thrown low and outside, is thrown high and inside, and there is the near interception. Jackie Flowers again to the top of the screen. Phil Williams to the bottom. Bowden uses wide receivers to shuttle into play. This is Lyles, and he is near the 35. Jim Chris got underneath him. Pick up a three, and it will be third down seven. I think it's going ahead. The difference between Woodham and Jordan, I think you saw just then on that sideline route. Jordan has a much stronger arm. However, Woodham is very effective on play action passes. He's very effective throwing to his back. He's good at picking the defenses apart as a leader. But as far as strength, Jordan is the man. Third down. And that is Hardis Johnson inside the Florida 40 to the 37 yard line. He got away from number 47, Bruce Vaughn. Curtis Johnson, a freshman who has been very effective filling in for Sam Platt, as we see Woodham throwing the ball to the sideline. And that ball is just well led. Certainly not an artistic success, but a perfect pass as far as a lead. And a great catch by Johnson. Bill Williams to the bottom of the screen on first down now from the 37 after that 30-yard completion. Woodham to Curtis Johnson. White, who was down near the 30. Could have been a late tackle call there. Unless I, Whiting bobbled it. I agree with you. Doc Lucky and Jim Chris were both there for Florida. Michael Whiting, as we pointed out earlier, has really given this running attack some stability, a converted fullback. He took over after the Virginia Tech game, and he's a good, solid runner who also doubles as a receiver. There are the statistics on Woodham. Flowers is to the top of the screen. Johnson to the bottom. Ball comes loose, but Mark Lyles had already gone down. Vince Jones, a freshman defensive tackle number 86 for Tampa, was the man who stopped Lyles after a pickup of four. Now, it will be third down. A yard to go for a first down. Ball is at the 28. They must get just inside the 27. Not necessarily a running situation for Florida State. They think every situation is a possible passing situation, and they could go play action pass and try to go for the touchdown right now. Williams to the bottom of the screen. And another delay of game call. So for the second time today, the Seminoles are late getting started on offense. And when you turn a third and one into third and six, that hurts. Now instead of a, an obvious running situation, you really have an obvious passing situation. Here they might mix it up by going to the draw or possibly a sweep because they are a team that likes to confuse the defense. Last year's leading rusher was a tailback named Holmes Johnson. He went home before this season. For small town. Yeah, small town boy having difficulty with the college atmosphere. Then they tried Greg Ramsey, and he tore a knee up. This is live. Well short of first down yardage. 
Mike Ricketts, the freshman linebacker, number 45, made the play out in the flat for Florida. There was the screen I just talked about out in the flat uh, to Lyleton. We talked about Holmes Johnson. There is a guy who was number three in career rushing with the year he had last year. He has written Bobby Bowden, says he will be back on campus for them next season. Bellin is on to try another field goal, this time from the 37-yard line, so it's a 47-yard kick within his range, and especially with a little wind behind him, as we still have just a minute remaining in the first quarter. Now Rick Stockstill turns to the official and calls for timeout, and that will be the second one that has been used in the quarter by Florida State, leaving them with only one remaining. like a Florida player was on the verge of jumping offside and that befuddled the Florida State offensive line and Stockstill rather than to draw another delay of game call and take them out of field goal range held up the time outside. Does that exhaust if I'm correct I think that exhausts their timeouts now. Well the scoreboard still shows one left. Oh okay. That's what I'm going by. But uh, you look at Bobby Bowden along the sidelines, came to Florida State from West Virginia. Before he arrived, the Seminoles had won four of their previous 33 games. The balance kick. No good wide to the right. Tried to hook it back in with the wind behind him, and it did not draw. It's just like hitting the five iron and watching it stay out there to the right and go into the trap. You hate it, don't you? I do. Coming up next on NCAA College Football at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, immediately following this game, Texas Tech against Houston. Important Southwest Conference battle as Houston is still in the running for the Cotton Bowl berth. Ninth-ranked Houston, 8-1 and one on the season, the only loss to Texas against Texas Tech with a great fullback, James Hadnot. Watch that one. On first down, Ochan. Throws complete to number 88, James Jones, a freshman tight end from Pompano Beach, Florida, and Paul Pirowski, the linebacker from Sarasota, dragged him down. James Jones, according to Charlie Pell, is the finest freshman he has ever seen at this tight end position. He has not started because Chris Faulkner, being a redshirt freshman, has a little more experience, but he thinks that James Jones, number 88, who we just saw coming underneath on that route, has unlimited potential. Collinsworth to the top of the screen, Garrett to the bottom. And Collinsworth has another catch across the 40 to the 41, and that will be a first down for the Gators. They got three yards on the first play, they got eight with that one. And with 23 seconds left in the quarter, a first down at the 41. Chris Collinsworth, the gifted athlete, taking that quick slant in route. There are the stats on Larry Ochev. Quite a Cinderella story on this young man. And we'll be talking about him throughout the show. Daryl Jones to the bottom of the screen. Kurt Garrett to the top. Flag is down. That was Terry Williams, the fullback with the football. Arthur Scott made the tackle, and now we'll wait for the penalty call. Looks as though it's going to be walked off against the Gators. And the orange jerseys have already moved the huddle back. Now they're going to decline. A legal motion declined to make it second down 10. 89, Spencer Jackson comes in at wide receiver with the play. Kirk Garrett leaves. And that's the end of the first quarter. So, the end of one quarter of play in Florida Field. It is 3-0 FSU.